in uh, in the Necros format, in the Shadow format, Shadow, Shadow Clowns, Necros Clowns. People can't get into these clowns. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting that after their their main deck where they should be be played in uh, is no longer as popular as it used to be. They are now making a splash in other decks and, and yeah. really making the difference, of course. Yeah, of course. I wonder how many games, I, I don't want to use the word stolen, but I wonder how many games Chris has won like that. <laughs> just, <laughs> just being like, oh, my opponent didn't open all that much. Maxi? Nah. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> it's interesting because normally the decks that are known for these things are uh, archetypes like Dark Synchro or Synchro yeah, Fusionist exactly. or things like that where they are known for being super explosive. Like yep. one, of course, used to be extremely explosive. Um, yeah. But, but the, the deck has gone through so many different iterations. Yeah. It's, it's it kind of... I remember when Judgment, like playing Judgment Dragon was the be-all, end-all of, of the deck. And now it's seen as one of the worst Lightsworn cards. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's really strange. Well, it's it's not down there with, like, Jane, for example. But <laughs> down there in the swamp of Lightsworn monsters. Yeah, with J Jane and the... They, they live above the clouds. They, yeah. are, they are all, like, not archangels the and things like that. <laughs> not the ones that have been banished down yeah, there. Yeah, so... They <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> don't make it sound like they're all living in a swamp. <laughs> so, wow. um, how many cards is Chris playing? I'm just curious because um, 50. fifty cards. Okay. Wow, okay. So, so talk about consistency well, in, in this lights one deck. Yeah, well, he's playing three pot of desires, three solar recharge. I mean, he's g he's got to go he's got to get really unlucky if he draws Garnet with fifty cards. <laughs> I guess that is one that is one way of looking at it. If um, if you play more cards, then you're less likely to draw cards, but if you're playing like three of something you do want to draw and one of something you don't want to draw, then you're more likely to draw the thing that you're playing three of. Right. Than the dra than drawing the one of. Yeah. It reminds you of the uh, calculations we tried to do yesterday with Yuri Lansman's deck, <laughs> <laughs> where we were like, why yeah, is why he is playing 50 one cards? Ooh. So Lewis here has opened gold gadget, yeah, silver gadget, this Buster is, Drake, Buster this Drake. This is the hand that... This is the hand that Mar Marcello Barberi had in round one. Yeah. Yesterday. And that game was over after that one round. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. That's uh, something to keep in mind here. But uh, it was a very nice display. We, we could tell why Fairy Tale Snow is being called the best card in the format by some players. Yeah. Well, there we go. And then, yeah, he's going to even be able to... Sum oh, okay, this is so good. He's going to be able to overlay the Assault Core, um, and then Crush Wyvern's going to summon B Buster Drake, and he's going to be able to summon another Exceed monster. Wow, this is uh, a lot of stuff here from Lewis. If he, he can summon some kind of defensive um, defensive Exceed monster, probably like um, Abyss Dweller, he's going he's gonna to be able to have Tsukiyomi, Abyss Dweller, and Buster Dragon. But wait, there's more. Yeah. Yeah. You're totally in this in this mode of um, yeah. There's another thing, and then there's another thing, yeah. and more coming. Yeah. And, but th this is really um, a prime example showing you why the ABC deck is is yeah. the popular choice this weekend. Yeah. Well, if you imagine that 200 and something people were playing this deck at the start of the tournament, yeah. we've only seen two. Well, two duels. We've only seen ten duels, and two of them did this yeah. of ABCs. Imagine how many of those 200 did this. Mm, yeah. Um, I don't agree with Reflesher. I think that Dweller probably would have been better. But again, yeah, it's kind of what you you know. It's it's a decision you yeah, can yeah. make. It's which which am I more scared of? So because uh, Ref he's already got ABC Dragon Buster to deal with field related issues. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if he gets some kind of lucky with being able to do some graveyard stuff then. Um, and didn't you say yeah. that normally many players told you w when you have this opening and your opponent's turn, you immediately get rid of the ABC f to trigger the hanger again? Yeah. And not get kaiju for example? Yeah. I think Chris isn't necessarily in an awful spot here. He's got a lot of cards. He's going to probably open with that Twin Twisters um, ditching the Minerva, the little Minerva. Or he's going to get rid of the Galaxy Soldier if he has no intention of using it. Oh, Felis. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting him to use Minerva just because I think it would have got its effect. And so he's gotten rid of uh, Book of Eclipse and the Union Hanger. Yeah. That's a that's solid. good way to kick things off. Yeah. But now he's down to four cards in hand and he still has to deal with three monsters on the nope. field. And the answer is let's shuffle up. Yeah. 
Wow, those are two really quick games. Yeah. <laughs> Andreas just yeah. like, what is this? Why do you need me? <laughs> I, I didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, I typed in the opening hand, and that was pretty much it. <laughs> so, um, that was quite the lock that was applied early mm -hmm. on. Oh, and that's uh, this is th that was a rinse and repeat of Marcelo Barberi. Yeah, and, and this is also one. why why many players went for this deck. They said, "I can I can sleepwalk through the tournament with this with this deck." I mean, it's not always that you get these opening hands, but no. a situation like this is is definitely not gonna. Um, force you to think about this game for the next 10 minutes. No. Just yeah. like, yeah, I, I make a mental note that I had a very good opening and my opponent yeah. just conceded. Yeah, but just imagine if Chris had um, system down. <laughs> yeah. I would have made all the difference, of course. Um, which yeah. is why side decks are playing such a major role. Yeah. I think Dark Hole would have been better in that situation. You just play Dark Hole and then you'd have been able to go crazy. All right, so it's 1-1. One, one. It didn't appear like both players would be siding a lot of cards. Uh, what is your take on this? They already got the perfect build for this particular matchup. And yeah, I think as soon as I think they don't, not, not, neither of them are really playing something that they, you know, they're not playing any trap cards that they want to see in the matchup. So it's not like they need to switch out going first or second. They're both probably playing specific cards for the build. And he doesn't draw Garnet, and he's got Brilliant Fusion. So there's that logic. Playing 50 cards, mm -hmm. doesn't draw Garnet, draws Brilliant Fusion more often. It's pretty solid logic. I bet he's had at least one game where he's drawn Garnet, though, and just felt really bad about it. So what's the perfect opening for Chris here? So he can Brilliant Fusion into um, Seraph Knight. The first, yeah, firstly the Photon Thrasher, because otherwise he's not going to be able to um, use the Photon Thrasher. Uh, he's going to reinforcements into... Ah, he's already got Raiden, so I don't know what route is going to be that much useful. It's probably going to be used on Goblinburg. So yeah, Trick Clown can overlay into Minerva now. And he's still got two normal summons here. So he could reinforce the army into another Raiden, but I don't think that would be that much use. I think Goblinburg would be better. Mm-hmm. Also he's like not even bothered about the Seraph Knight. <laughs> he, <laughs> he just knows he's played Brilliant Fusion and got the Trick Clan in the graveyard. He doesn't really mind <laughs> about anything else. So, so also no Maxi in Lewis's opening hand, so he can do nothing no, here. Free reign here. Yeah, he has to he has to watch and like shiver basically what's gonna go yeah. down on the other side of the field. So wow, Chris uh, Mill the Light Swan of Minerva, that means he gets to draw a card. This is why this this Minerva is just so strong. Did he draw into a wolf? Uh, no, that was a galaxy soldier. Okay. They do look very similar, though. Galaxy yeah. Soldier and Wolf. Uh, just the way that they're stood makes them look kind of similar. <laughs> I think it was Galaxy Soldier. Anyway. Yeah, it's got Fairy Tail Snow in hand. This card, you don't want to draw into it. You want to send it right, right yeah. out to the... Although, actually, since it's a level 4, it's not... No, it's not, not bad. It's not and he's got two normal summons at this point, so... So, actually, you, he doesn't mind. doesn't really much. mind all yeah. that much. He's still got reinforcements in the army as well, so he can use Goblinburg. Such a good card, Fairy Tail yeah. Snow. So discarding the snow for a Galaxy Soldier, he's going to get Galaxy Soldier's effect. He can uh, tribute summon the other Galaxy Soldier. He's, go he's going to get Goblinburg. <laughs> he's going to get Goblinburg because he knows he's going to do that. He's got a reinforcements in his hand that he's definitely going to go get Goblinburg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then, <laughs> yeah. He, th there must be just thoughts after thoughts racing in his head right yeah. now as to what, what he's going to do. You can also tell, like, the yeah. quick count of the graveyard. Can I bring snow back? When can I bring snow back? What yeah. else do I need to do? <laughs> he knew that was going to happen. He was, like, sometimes you do that in a, in a deck that searches so much. You don't even see the cards you've got. You see the cards you know <laughs> you're going to go get. <laughs> yeah, so to make no absolutely sure that he knows that he's using that second normal summon. So that's probably going to be an Omega. Just to reduce the chances of... I mean, this is the perfect hand here. He's then going to tribute that for Galaxy Soldier and then into Cyber Dragon Infinity. Yeah, he's now played all of his cards and he's still not done. Yeah. So he has to play with five cards and he's got to play through an Infinity as well. Well. Wow. That's, that's a lot to ask. Yeah. And Snow as well. <laughs> Did you see him just like going... I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. Woof. Okay, this 
Ooh. This it is going to come down to kind of what Omega hits, to be honest. I mean, there is a Union Hanger here. Well, he's got two Union Hangers. So, I mean, it, yeah, it, even if Infinity Negates one, he's still going to be able to play the second one. Right. What's the terraforming? Yeah. I was just looking really closely. I, was, I only read one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the terraforming is, yeah, the is one. effectively another Union Hanger. Yeah. yeah. Terraforming such a great card at the moment. I actually don't think there was a more perfect opening for Chris, unless unless he uh, milled double wolf with Minerva and then drew more cards and then into like a dweller yeah, or something it's else. Don't be ridiculous. Yeah, there, there was <laughs> there could have been more, but <laughs> if he passes here, he just starts it. He needs to start playing some Union Hangers. Okay, plays the. This is even better to be honest for um, for Chris because he's got. Two shots at the Union Hanger. Okay, so yeah, he's he his opponent can't play Union Hanger now. And now so now we're down to it has to be Pot of Desires, which which does the does the deed of yeah. making him draw into something that the, makes the so called searching. Yeah. If he like if he plays, yeah, so I'd just be like, yeah, sure, sure you can, sure you can have the terraforming. But yeah, if he plays the Union Hanger, then it's most likely the target of. Negation. Or he may decide to leave the activation of it and then stop its other effect. But we'll we'll see exactly yeah. what happens. And this is the important card here, the Cyber Dragon Infinity. Yeah. Such a powerful card. Yeah. Well, those ga that Galaxy Soldier combo with uh, Seraph Knight was really good. <coughs> it's okay. Well, Union Hanger actually sticks, it seems. Yep. So he's letting it happen. And you agree with that? Y yes, I'd no, not sure? I, think, I guess I have perfect information here. I'd have probably negated the Union Hanger, and then he would have had to rely on the fact that Part of Desires... Because at this point, Lewis could end his turn and be like, okay, that's one turn that I played through Infinity. Right. Yeah, surprising. Uh, that's quite a surprising turn. Omega's going to come back. So now I think he's probably going to Minerva first. I mean, Minerva has to do some work now. Yeah, because he's definitely going to get a trick clown. That's not a great mill for Chris there. Still gets his trick clown back. I, I what did he draw? Felice. Mm. Can't he can't normal summon that? Definitely not the perfect hand right here. No. And can he, he just needs to start attacking and get some damage in? So we got the solemn strike. Face double down. strike. I think that's the. That's the important thing here. Yeah. He's, He's reading his own infinity. He doesn't know what the card does. No. It's confusing. Yeah. I think he's got enough stuff here to just start. He just needs to just do some attacks. Um... Okay, I think I've never seen a Cyber Dragon Infinity do less than what we just saw here. <laughs> Luke is also like, huh? <laughs> How does this happen? <coughs> so yeah, Lewis gets rid of the infinity in super easy way, actually. And now Snow has to put in some work. Yeah. And it can, of course. There's like plenty of cards in the graveyard for Chris. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it could get striked. But it doesn't. All right, so snow goes through. But of course, the ABC deck not running out of resources with the Union Hanger on the nope, field. Not at all. Just gonna hang in there. Yeah, I think that's why it's called Hanger. <laughs> I think Chris is gonna struggle now. It's so odd because it looked like the perfect opening. Yeah, it really was. If he'd have just attacked rather than trying to gain more advantage with um, with the the Infinity, 
he would have been way better off. But he's still got Minerva on the field. If Minerva's there, then all is all is well. Because if Minerva gets destroyed and he mills well, then not a problem. Hmm. But, but he's got what, what to was snow keeping in. him from activating the the Cyber Dragon Infinity? Did he try to get yeah, more he out of it? Yeah, so Cyber Dragon Infinity lets you take a, an attack position monster yeah. and equip it to it. So he tried to do that and then he got striked. Yeah, no, no, I mean the turn before. Like you can also, um, this, why didn't you use the negations? Yeah, again, yeah, again, I don't know why. He should have just, he should have just started taking net value, stuff at a net value, and yeah. okay, I'm just gonna take that, that union hanger off I you. Mean, I, I always think it's, it's one of these formats, or actually we've seen this last couple of years where like every single card can count so much and make such a big difference. Yeah. And so many things are about tempo rather than card advantage. Yeah. So. If you can pull ahead, even though you might only be pulling ahead for one turn or two turns, and you can finish the game in the, the following turn, yeah. who cares if your opponent is going to have plus five, three turns in the future that he's never going to see? Yeah. And uh, he should have just negated the, the, the Union Hanger. I don't know what possibly he could have been waiting for. So at this point, at least, at least the Buster Drake's not going to get its effect. Yeah, I mean, if he had Infinity here, he could have, he could have negated. Yeah, just that Union Hanger wouldn't have been there. <laughs> yeah, and that's caused him to his opponent to get a plus two. Yeah, and yeah, fight his way back into the game. Yeah. All right. So Chris currently has the upper hand on the field. It's now uh, Lewis's turn again, who did draw into a second Union Hanger. Speaking of the devil. Oh, actually, he did draw into Book of Eclipse. He already had a second Union Hanger. Um, I think he searched on his opponent's turn for the effect of the destroyed card. Yeah, he he must have he, he must because I think we missed one of his draw phases. He's mm -hmm. drawn two cards at this point. So yeah, he did just have Pot of Desires, and now the the two cards that we missed is Union Hanging Book Clips. So how how does this look for Chris now? I mean, definitely worse than before. Yeah, definitely worse than before. And mm -hmm. at the very least, Buster Dragon is just. Bigger than all of his opponent's monsters. Right. So there's Nothing a book of eclipse. Said. Yeah. Uh, Abyss Dweller already activated, or is going to activate now? No, he's going to activate. Um, he's going to play Dweller, and he's going to play Omega. Okay, there's the Dweller, and that is it. No Omega. No, no Omega. Okay. Surprising. Ah, he could. Yeah, he played Eclipse in standby phase. I think Omega's the right. main phase. Book of Eclipse can actually be a really good card. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I was saying, um, I, I, I spoke to Justin afterwards, and he was saying about Book of Eclipse, and he was like, oh, I wanted to use it to defend myself in the game. Yeah. And it's, it's not for that. It's no. In this format, it's for an offensive... It's very much an offensive... Um, an all-out attack, yeah. basically. It's like, oh, my opponent's got a load of stuff that he can use his monster effects for. Like, let's put them all face down. No chance of him playing those. <laughs> then I'll clear through them. Oh, Did he really just draw two Pot of Desires with a Pot of Desires? Oh, my gosh. That's like the... That's, that's the worst thing that can happen to you. Now, that's a minus nine. <laughs> that is, <laughs> that's actually a minus nine. Wow. <laughs> Just what are the odds? That is, you, you should not be playing the lottery, my friend. Uh, the, the odds of that is 1.97. <laughs> that's <laughs> just terrible. Absolutely terrible. Wow. <laughs> if somebody sees that... It's, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like a less than 5% chance or something. Yeah. I mean, he's draw actually, no, he's, yeah, he's, he's drawn through a bit of his deck, so I think it's a little bit more than that. But Yeah, but, but if you want to have an argument it's against like Pot of Desires, this is it. Like, this Just is not really playing three. Yeah. I don't, I don't like three. Wow. Matt always says to me playing three is good if you want to see it, but yeah. you don't want to see it. Well, he, this. he saw it. He saw it. He saw it, yeah. <laughs> Matt is correct. Yeah, he saw it, yeah. He did see it in, in threes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just co co compare this to other cards where you're really happy if you see three copies of them. Yeah. Um, this is not what you were looking for. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ideally, you wanted to banish those two. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's, what about his stake size? He's still got uh, one more activation of Pot of Desires is certainly in the, in the cards, but a third yeah. one, probably not. No. Nah. A third one is uh, never in the cards, isn't it? No, but here he's going to be able to make multiple Dragon Busters. Who do you think is going to win this match? 
I think it's going to be Lewis. Because the ABC is now having free reign for the most part. Yeah, this this turn is going to just titch, completely turn the tides. However, he, he needs to banish Minerva so it doesn't give its effect. So there's, there's the Omega. You can summon another Dragon Bus there. Yep, there we go. <laughs> they also come in uh, several copies. How good is this card? <laughs> yeah, it's one of those Joshua Schmidt responses. Like, huh? Yeah. You kidding me? It's it's very good. So it the book just of Eclipse so much stuff. Just did exactly what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Um, completely denying Chris. He may snow here. It would be a good move to snow right now. Because now at least he's got a rank four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. There you go. See, in situations like this, this, this is where a Judgment Dragon would be good. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, very hard to argue. Yeah. This is actually the, the prime example of yeah, why like Judgment Dragon was a card. Yeah. Pulse. Oh, I wanna, but I want to detach my bus to Dragon. Although his graveyard is now quite empty. But yeah. that's because of snow. I think it's just got Light Swan monsters left, though. I don't think he even plays four different Light Swan names, to be honest. Oh, he does, yeah. Wolf, Felice, Lila, Lumina. Actually, he's main decking one Eren as well. I don't, yeah. I don't know what that's for. <laughs> <laughs> and the Minerva. Actually, no, Eren's real good. I've just, I've just thought about that. Yeah, if you snow something and then Eren it, <laughs> that's, that's pretty nice. It's slow though. I mean, it's not as good. It's not like it's raiding. Because okay, he's gonna castell one. I'm pretty sure Buster Dragon's got massive defense as well. So two eight. Yeah. So, yeah, gets banished. That's gonna. Cause the clown to come back. He's just checking. Have I got enough to summon snow again? Oh, he's actually got Lumina and a card in his hand, and he's not a normal summoned. There's this may go really well for Chris here. Lumina's the best he could have got. What's his face down? The face on Solemn oh, Strike. St is that still that same strike? Yeah, uh, I'm trying to remember if it's still the same strike. Yeah, it must have uh, been. Yeah. Surely. And that, uh, that kind of stops that off. Yeah, so so, so crucial this strike right now. Yeah, um, stopping Lumina. Otherwise, we we could have seen an opening for Chris here. Yeah, I mean he can uh, he can go into Utopia the Lightning. Try to do something there, but still, it's, it's not much going on here. I think that's his only option though. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. <laughs> Exercise and counting. Yeah. Well, we're, you know, getting our mathematics brains on the go. Mm -hmm. How does he get rid of the ABC? Monsters. Okay, one of them. Unlinks? Yeah. There's a good way to work around the snow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, he needs to make some. He definitely, definitely, definitely needs to make something that's got bigger than 2,800 attack points to try and take away the, uh, the face down Dragon Buster. Yeah. And to be fair, his opponent's only got one Dragon Buster left. Um, does he play? He does play Emerald. <laughs> I, I've been saying this to all the ABC, uh, all the ABC players that I spoke to. They keep no. saying to me, "Oh, we've not got space for Emerald." But if <laughs> if you run out of Dragon Busters, then you're busted. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that played a role when they were designing the card. Yeah. How can we work in all the puns in the future? Yeah. Right. So it's it's definitely not looking good for Chris. No. Um, if you don't know that the face down card is an ABC Dragon Buster, then you might be like, oh, why is it not looking that good? Yeah, it's too but bad. It's okay. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, I th as I said before, he's, I think his only option here is Utopia Lightning. Mm. 
All right, here we go. So he gets rid of one of the Dragon Busters. There's another one basically lying on the field. Yeah. He's still got the clown, so he can keep on paying for that clown. He's paid four times for that clown now. It's kind of gets quite costly eventually. Yeah. A lot of value that he got out of the card, though. Yeah, 100%. So, yeah, Union Hanger. Just more and more stuff now. It is a card. Yeah. He drew another level four as well, so he's just going to be able to make so many falls here. He has no option to play another snow. Yeah, I think I think, I think he's about to shuffle up, isn't he? Yeah. Not quite yet, but you can see that it's coming. Yeah. As I'm yeah, and that's the hand. Hand. Yeah, that's immediately like, okay, this is this is definitely over. Yeah. What an interesting game. What an interesting game. Yeah. I don't know why I don't know why Chris didn't negate with Infinity. Yeah, that's definitely one of the topics for our post-game analysis. Yeah. 